In the last several years, we've seen teams make moves for elite receivers to take their quarterbacks from middle tier, middle of the pack, and elevate them atop the NFL. Stephon Diggs with Josh Allen, Jamar Chase with Joe Burrow, AJ Brown for Jalen Hurts. Giving your quarterback an elite receiver can rapidly accelerate his development, which is why the stakes for this year's rookie class chalked full of potential elite receivers are sky high for teams drafting early. Enter 6'4", 205-pound Marvin Harrison Jr. and 6'2", 201 Malik Neighbors. Two incredible prospects with extremely different skill sets, where Harrison Jr. is across the board the safer bet, but lacks some of the high-end traits that Neighbors possesses, while Neighbors is more raw and more of a projection, while he has elite movement ability. Today, we'll dive into their film starting with Maserati Marv to analyze his strengths, weaknesses, and best potential fit, and then we'll get into Neighbors. Many believe that Harrison is easily the better prospect, and it's not hard to see why. He's long, he's fast, he can beat you a million different ways, he dominates man, he dominates zone, he can beat press coverage, you can move him around and play him off the ball, he is the perfect breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert receiver. That means he can win early in the route at the line, breakfast, can win in the drive phase as he's getting into his route, lunch, separate at the top of the route for dinner, and then my own personal touch, winning at the catch point, which is the cherry on top, dessert. Kicking it off with breakfast, cause, duh, he has a deep arsenal of releases that he can change the speed and tempo on at any time. He projects as a typical X receiver, which is the receiver that always aligns on the line of scrimmage, so you need a bigger, more physical receiver who can beat press because corners know you'll be closer, and Harrison uses these releases to beat it, albeit with more finesse to win early in the down. He actually plays like a defensive lineman rushing the passer. The two positions are actually really similar, where he starts with a huge hezzy single release to set Chance Rucker up, but Rucker doesn't budge and holds his inside leverage ready to press him. Harrison uses what, honestly, the Bosa's call side scissors, where when the offensive lineman tries to jam you, you swipe them away. I can't emphasize enough the precision and technique this takes to perfectly attack the wrist or elbow, the weak points in the arm, and Marvelous Marv demonstrates just one way he can counter tight coverage early in the down. Slants are my favorite route that he runs because of the variety of ways he can win early and then quickly come open. When corners line up a little off the line of scrimmage, Harrison likes to use a diamond release, which is a hard three steps outside to sell up the field, typically used to create separation inside for an in-breaking route. Watch how he sells up the field, then the moment Kalen King flips his hips to honor what he thinks is the deeper route coming, Harrison breaks back inside. Bad throw. He can also adjust his diamond release, or any of his releases, to attack the defender in front of him based on how the game is playing out. Benjamin Morrison had been playing tighter coverage on him all game, so Harrison hits him with the quicker diamond release, knows that he wasn't going to be able to create that extra separation at the top of the release like he did with King, and makes the tough catch in traffic. There's a lot of finesse to his game, as we've seen on these routes, but as I said, with him projecting as an X receiver on the line, playing at 6'4", he's going to need to win with lots of power, and he can. He uses a similar release here, but like I said, Morrison wasn't budging much the entire game, so Harrison uses what's basically a club arm over, another pass rusher move. Let's watch the Eagles' Jalen Carter from last year's class use the same move, a classic pass rush move where you're smashing the pad of the lineman, then using your other arm to clear him completely out of the picture. Well, with Harrison, we can see him destroy King with that same club on the arm, swims over him with the arm over, and creates tons and tons of separation. When we look at the lunch phase for Harrison, he likes to use power to win. Against King again, he uses the same Jalen Carter Club arm over move, where he's smashing really his armpit here to deaden that arm, then watch how he uses his arm over move to create a shield between him and King to create that mid-route separation up the seam. When we then look at the dinner phase, he's a very smooth operator. He can get into his dig routes really nicely, clean, controlled. You see some college receivers trying to think too much and chopping their feet, which makes them late to their spot. And you know a route is good when the receiver can run a double move off of it that has the cornerback so unbelievably fooled he jumps the first route and gets absolutely torched. The dessert aspect is his elite ability to high point the ball outside of his frame. If dinner is creating separation at the top of the route, we need a way to analyze how you catch the ball 
and Marv has spectacular catch dialed all the way up to 99 for dessert. The only issues I see with his game are just general inconsistencies. Against Notre Dame, his worst game of the season, he was getting pushed around and bullied, so he was unable to use his hand moves and thusly any of his power. This led to him struggling to create separation in each phase of the route. No breakfast, lunch, or dinner, so no dessert. So when his hand placement is inconsistent trying to knock defenders off of him, he doesn't really have the power in his slighter 205-pound frame to be able to get him to go away. Believe it or not, Neighbors weighs the same as him, even though he's four inches shorter, and you really see his strength despite his smaller frame because he really packs a punch. He is a way different type of receiver than Harrison, where Marv is more technically refined, more of an X receiver, smoother, at least as an overall prospect, Neighbors is raw, unpolished, and plays every down like he's shot out of a cannon. In the very first game of the season, LSU tried to put him on the ball as an X like Harrison, and he struggled. He doesn't have the harness strength that Harrison has, and he doesn't have the refined technique to be able to win consistently with his hands. His tool bag of releases isn't nearly as deep, a lot of speed releases to get outside of guys' frames and just hope they don't get hands on him. Speed is really his only move at the line, and that needs to be improved over time after he gets drafted. But since LSU didn't have time, they moved him out of the X roll on the ball and stuck him in the slot off the ball where he exploded. This is the role that he is supposed to be in. It's not necessarily a bad thing that he can't be an X receiver. If his next team doesn't ask him to play there, he could easily be the most productive receiver in this class because his movement ability is rare. It's so rare that once teams could no longer press him at the line because he was bumped off the ball, they respected his speed so much that they just completely backed off and he ate. Not only can he move quicker than anybody, but what differentiates him is his control while doing it. His ability to snap down is in my opinion better than Harrison's, where he's able to sell the deep route and then at any moment snap down, which is critical to being a master route runner. If there is any indication you're about to snap down, the cornerback can just jump your route and intercept the pass. But when elite receivers can pair vertical speed with a clean, tell-free snapdown, it makes them brutal to defend. This is one reason why he is so dominant deep. Defenses have to play off of him to respect his speed, they have to respect his snapdown, and so he just torches right past him. You can see him run not really full speed here towards to Cam Arian Richardson, who's playing a deep quarter and already has his hips flipped. One thing I love that good receivers do is pretend to start rising up on their double moves. Why? Because that deceives corners by showing what an inexperienced route runner would do, which is to start rising up because they don't have control of their body weight to cleanly snap down. Neighbors fakes a snap down and look at the footwork he uses while contorting his body to explode into the next phase of the route and create more separation than Madam Web and good. Yes, he is extremely raw, and a big part of that is LSU's offense. They run a vertical college offense, which is almost exclusively goes and curls. It's the best way to get your elite Malik Neighbors receivers in space and just have Jaden Daniels throw bombs outside and waltz into a Heisman. But the problem is, this type of offense doesn't really translate to the NFL since the league is way more about technique since there is less space between the hashes and better overall talent, so it is harder to project neighbors. But with that said, you can still see real translatable football ability on his tape. Mississippi State is showing what looks like man coverage pre-snap, even though this is a safety, and LSU is running two curls. To get open against man, Neighbors has to beat Chris Keyes back inside, despite the fact that Keyes has inside leverage, and at the snap it still looks like man, with Keyes full on eye contact, man to man right in front of him, but Neighbors feels Richardson dropping into a zone third, knows that means it's zone, so the moment he clears Keyes, who then buzzes to the flat, he settles in the soft spot in zone and turns his head to make the catch. This is the kind of route running savviness you want to see from a receiver who played in a rudimentary offense, because real NFL reps on LSU's film is few and far between. Neighbors reminds me a lot of a much smaller AJ Brown, who has about 25 pounds on him. I want to see a team use him like Titans AJ Brown, where he's running those quick hitting drift glance routes over the middle 
getting the ball in his hands quickly and horizontally, letting him tear up the field and break tackles, which as we saw, statistically, he does way more than Harrison. For him, I'm hoping he goes to the Cardinals at 4 and they put him in the DeAndre Hopkins role. I've done a few videos on Kyler and the Cards offense in the past where they loved putting Nuke outside isolated by himself and just let him work against the man in front of him where he'd win every single time. Kyler can't really see over the middle, so he doesn't target the middle. So play to his strengths if he really is your guy and give him that outside dominant threat he can target over and over. When it comes to comparing these two receivers, Harrison is the slam dunk, safe bet, perennial Pro Bowl receiver, but I lean a little towards Neighbors, who is raw, riskier, but has unbelievable movement ability and freakiness that I don't quite see with anybody else in this class. Both of these guys are leading a stacked draft class in the 2024 NFL Draft, and the moment they both get in the league, no matter what, they will dominate. This